All right, guys, this is section 11.4. 11.4 is on selecting and drawing from samples. This is going to be a very vocab-based lesson. There isn't a ton of um, actual like number manipulation that we are doing. Um, really just trying to get you guys to understand these terms that are associated with samples uh, and very fundamental to statistics. So the idea behind 11.4 is we want to know information about a topic. Uh, and in order to gain that information, we are going to go and ask people. We're going to conduct surveys or samples. Um, the population is who we want to know information about. So we want to know what Spectrum students think about this topic. Or we want to know what Americans think about this topic. Or we want to know what some group of people think about some topic. Um, who we want to know the information about is considered the population. Now, typically, it's impossible to ask everybody within that population, or, or at least very often, it's impossible to ask everyone, uh, whether that be because it's expensive or time consuming or just too much data. Uh, so instead of asking everyone in our population, we are going to conduct a sample, which is going to be a smaller group of people that we are actually going to ask information about. It is possible for the population in the sample to be the exact same thing. We want to know information about this group of people, so we ask everyone in that group of people. Um, our population and our sample are the same thing. We call that a census. And you guys should have some information or some familiarity with that um, because every 10 years, our country does a census and they ask everybody in the country uh, certain questions, right? And that actually is happening right now. I don't know if you're um, if at home, people have mentioned, hey, we're doing the census or, or we got information about that. But every 10 years, they take information about, they want to know information about Americans, and they ask everybody in America. That's called a census. Um, typically, the sample will be smaller, though, and we have different ways that we can select our sample. Um, one way is by conducting a self-selected sample. And a self-selected sample is going to be um, a group that's selected to be in the sample themselves, right? It's kind of in the name there. Um, we want to know information about a restaurant. And so um, we go look at reviews on Google or on Yelp, okay? That would be a self-selected sample. Why is it a self-selected sample? Well, the People who left those reviews chose to leave those reviews. They chose to be in the sample, right? Um, which is what we call a self-selected sample. Uh, another example would be like, you know, if you guys have seen like on the back of a Burger King or like a Subway receipt, um, they'll be like, fill out this survey and you'll get a free cookie. Um, well, that's clearly a self-selected sample um, because the people who fill out the survey have selected to be in the sample. Now, our goal in conducting a, a sample, right, taking a sample and having it be, our goal is to have it be a good representation of the population. Okay? We don't want certain groups of people um, to be overrepresented in our population or underrepresented in our population. We want our sample to look like our population. And so self-selected surveys are typically a poor example of a, of a sample because the people who choose to be in those samples are often the most passionate people, okay? You think about a, uh, you know, reviews of a restaurant. The people who leave those reviews did so for a reason. Most people don't go online and start leaving reviews of every restaurant they, they go to. It's more common that someone's going to leave a review because they are very passionate about that particular restaurant. Either they had some fantastic experience, it's their favorite restaurant, they're worried about like going under, they're like, hey, just everyone needs to go here, it's the best thing ever. Or oftentimes it'll be like, there was fingernails in my food, it was came out cold, the serving staff was mean, right? All these different things, reasons why they didn't like it. It's not all that common to go on there and say, hey, the food was pretty good. I'd go back if I was in the area, but I wouldn't seek it out. Like, that's fine. That's good information. That's probably how most people feel about the restaurant. Um, but those aren't the type of reviews that you usually see because if it's a self-selected sample, you're going to get the most passionate people choosing to be a part of that sample. Another type of sample would be a systematic 
sample. This is when you're going to create a rule for who is being selected. So for example, if I went out in front of Spectrum and I was like, hey, um, do you guys, how do you guys feel about homework, the amount of homework that you get at school? And so I waited by the front door and I selected every 10th student and I said, hey, um, 10th student, 20th student, 30th student, right? That's my rule. That's what makes it systematic. Um, and I asked them how they feel about, about Spectrum. Systematic samples can be good or they can be poor depending on other, other um, information in regards to the sample. Um, me asking every 10 student who comes into the building what they feel, how they feel about homework, that's probably a pretty good sample in all honesty. Um, how I could make this a poor sample would be if I said, let me think about this. If I went to a dog park, um, my population is people of Elk River. Okay, I want to know what people of Elk River think about dogs. And I go to a dog park and I ask every 10th person at the dog park. Well, that's not representative of the population, people of Elk River, right? I, I'm going to be asking who goes to a dog park? Well, dog owners. So I'm going to be getting way more people, you know, responding positively about dogs um, if I go to a dog park and ask every 10th person. So um, that's the kind of thing that you're going to have to be have to be thinking about because I'm going to be asking questions like, is this a biased sample or an unbiased sample? Which means I have that definition down below. But what that means is, does my population or sorry, does my sample well represent my population? Or are there certain subgroups of people that are overrepresented or underrepresented? A convenient sample is doing what is convenient to the surveyor. So whoever is conducting the sample, what's convenient to them? Uh, if I, as a as a, your teacher was like, what do my students think about um about algebra two okay um so population my students sample is who i actually ask um, one thing that would be pretty convenient to me would be to be like just like pick a couple people that i choose right i'm like hey what do you think what do you think i just go around and I ask 10 people well that's pretty convenient to me that's not a good method for creating a sample why is it not a good method well I have way too much control. As the surveyor, I am deciding who I'm asking. Well, who am I going to ask? Probably people who I have a pretty good relationship with or who I, you know, frequently have conversations with. It would not be a unbiased sample because I have way too much control in this situation. Another thing, another method for a convenient sample, let's say I want to know what Elk River, um, people in Elk River think about me starting a, a restaurant in Elk River. And so I go on to Messenger and I just, Facebook Messenger, and I'm like, Facebook and people, I ask 10 people. Well, that's convenient to me. And I could ask only people in Elk River, right? Um, I asked 10 people from Elk River. Well, yes, it, I mean, it kind of, it is a sample of sorts, but as the surveyor, I've had way too much control. Even if it's implicit, even if I'm not really realizing it, I'm gonna ask people, more than likely who would be in favor of me starting a restaurant because that's the answer I want to hear. So convenience samples um, are very difficult to be unbiased because the surveyor just has way too much control, if, whether that be implicit or, or known. Uh, the goal is to have it be a random sample. Okay, We want to randomly select um, who, is, who is in our sample from our population. How we can do this is um, let's say we want to know what Spectrum students think about some policy, okay, or that might be the HAP policy. Okay, we take a list of all Spectrum students, and then I randomly select, okay, using like a random um, digit table or a random number generator. I randomly select which students are going to be asked. So it's like it says student 123, and so I find the 123rd student. And I ask that student, and then it says, ask, you know, student 312. So I find the 312 student, and I ask that student. So um, 
that is a perfect random sample. Uh, another, the, the premise is you're putting all of the names into a, a metaphorical hat and you are selecting which students or which um, people in your population are going to be a part of your sample, right? All people from your population go into a bucket and you randomly select them. And it could actually be you, pay, you throwing everybody's name into a hat and randomly select them. That's fine, okay? Um, that would be considered random. That was a lot of talking. Hopefully you guys understood that. Um, like I was talking about, your goal is to have it be an unbiased sample. We want our sample to be a good representation of the population that we want information about. Um, it would be a biased sample if our sample overrepresents or underrepresents a part of the population. I'm going to go back to that dog example. If I'm asking questions about what people would think about, you know, you know, people, dog owners, and I hmm, back up. If my population is what do elk river people think about um, leash laws? Okay, if you have to have your dog on a leash, and I go to a dog park and I ask that, that's not going to be a very um, a very well represented population because people who don't own dogs will not be at the dog park. They did not have a chance to be a part of the sample. Another way that we can bring bias into a sample is actually just the way we word the question. And so sometimes, and, and you can kind of see this in um, in the real world, um, you know, you're the, the, you're, your guys are bombarded, bombarded with data. And uh, sometimes I could kind of ask a question that leads the responder uh, a certain direction. So if I asked a question that was like, don't you agree that, um, you know, Spectrum's building is kind of run down or some, some question like that, where I'm leading you towards uh, an answer, that's going to be biased, right? Because it is more likely that the surveyor is just going to agree with you, okay? Um, so you want questions that don't persuade um, the the sample, the people in the sample, to answer one way or another. Another way that I could bring bias 